So Lizzo, it's I, I, the transition works because Lizzo is somebody who's been trying to say, it's healthy to be this fat, like body positivity, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And okay, that's fine. It's like redefining. I don't believe that it's not healthy, but she's working it to the tune of, I'm sure, you know, over a hundred million dollars probably at this point. And she's got um, all these advantages, right? She's got so many blessings. She get asked, gets asked to perform at Joe Biden's fundraiser last Friday night. Mm -hmm. She does it. Mm -hmm. And within 24 hours, she quits music. Mm -hmm. She sends out her little post. I'm, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of being criticized in the internet. All I try to do is put positivity out there into the world. And what do I get? I get trolled. I quit. Mm -hmm. Well, that lasts about two minutes. <laughs> She's back. Okay. Uh, I didn't quit music. I just quit haters. Okay. No, she quit, right? Yeah. She's got whatever, she rethought it. But to me, Maureen, this shows something you write about all the time, which is her disgusting sense of entitlement. This is a person who has won Emmys. She's won Grammys. She has her own fashion line. She's now making movies. She had a reality TV series. She is lauded as, a, as an icon mm -hmm. by every magazine and every entertainment uh, show and publication. Um, she's made probably, like I said, hundreds of millions mm -hmm. or at least over a hundred million. She's got double platinum, quadruple platinum, seven time platinum albums. She gets celebrated at every turn. She gets asked to appear before three presidents. It's not enough because some people dared to criticize her online. She's got to throw a fit like a little brat and say, I quit. And she's going to be begged back into the business by all of her adoring fans because she doesn't want to traffic in hate. I'm sorry, she went political. She's constantly lecturing us about the body, so it's fine to talk about the body and whether what she's saying is true. And she, like so many of these celebrities, think that their, you know what, doesn't stink, and we're not allowed to weigh in on their controversial behavior or just say we don't like them. Right, right. You know what I thought when I saw that announcement, I quit, I thought, what is really going on behind the scenes? Do you remember several months ago that lawsuit that was yeah. filed by all those backup dancers and they were alleging that there was weird sexual stuff going on and, and hostile she was work bully environment. And, and you know, that really took her back. Like that you could tell that there was something really amiss in the house of Lizzo. And which, by the way, all of those accomplishments that you just listed that belong to her are exceedingly vanishingly rare in the cultural landscape to break through all the noise in this incredibly fragmented culture and become a mainstream pop star. It's incredibly difficult. So she's already in the 1% of the 1%. Yeah. So that was initially my thought. And because it also came on the tail end of all of this, these far more explosive allegations against Sean Diddy Combs. Mm -hmm. And I thought somebody's trying to get ahead of something. And perhaps, mm -hmm. then perhaps having been on stage and ratified by Obama and Clinton and Biden and being among this, you know, rarefied crowd sort of made her rethink withdrawing from the public eye. I mean, who knows? It feels very schizophrenic. It doesn't feel like the most sober judgments one might be making within mm -hmm. the span of 48 hours. Good point, yeah. Well, look, I all I wanna hear from Lizzo is thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard. Thanks so much. Really appreciate all my many blessings. I don't wanna hear about how she doesn't like online negative comments, Meghan Markle. I mean, that's the problem. Like you put yourself in the public eye, you want fame and fortune, there's a downside. We all know it. Most of us take it like men or women and don't go whining, I quit, I'm taking my ball and going home. So as it turns out, she wants more of your money because she's back in the business. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about a guy named Leo Grillo. Leo was on a road trip and came across a Doberman. This dog was severely underweight and clearly in trouble. Well, Leo rescued the dog and named him Delta. Sadly, Delta was just one of many animals that need help. And this inspired Leo to start Delta Rescue, the largest no-kill, care-for-life, animal sanctuary in the world. They have rescued thousands of dogs, cats, and horses from the wilderness, and they provide their animals with shelter, love, safety, a home. April marks 45 years since Leo rescued Delta. Delta Rescue relies solely on contributions to do what it does. And if you would like caring for these animals to be part of your legacy, speak with your estate planner because there are tax benefits to helping. 
You can grow your estate while letting your love for animals live well into the future. Check out the estate planning tab on their website to learn more and speak with your advisor. We call dog man's best friend for a reason. You can help those who need it most. Visit deltarescue.org today to learn more. That's deltarescue.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.